Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Sean Austin here from Sean's Rabbit Train Aquaponic Produce. We'll be back with another rabbit farming video. So good to see you guys today. Alright, we have a lot going on in and around the rabbit tree. We're doing some work out in the field as well, putting on some field corn, uh, some other crops as well, some citrus. But today, in the rabbit tree, we're going to talk a bit about rabbits and hares. Now, late last week, I met a guy who was just getting into rabbits. And he told me that he went to someone's home and he saw that they had a hare. And it was so big and he was so excited about the size of this hair. And his thought was that he could purchase one of those as a breeding male, right, to cross with his rabbits and hopefully create larger offspring. So I had to let him know, hey, there's a lot that people don't know about rabbits and hares. So today, what we're going to try to do, hopefully, is to remove some of those misconceptions so stay tuned we'll be back with more on this topic right after the intro okay guys we're back so let's see, today we're talking about rabbits and hares. Now, many years ago, I remember when I was still in school, a friend of mine got really upset when she heard that we reared rabbits for meat. And she went on for a while talking about how rabbits are rodents, how you could eat a rodent. And I had to stop her in a truck. I said, no, no, my dear. Rabbits, like hares and peacocks, belong to the family of Lagomorpha. So they are Lagomorphs. They are not rodents, contrary to popular belief. I've heard a lot of people say that over the years, and I always have to correct them. Rabbits are Lagomorphs, as well as hares and peacocks. But even though they belong to the same family, they're quite different in many ways. So let's look at some of the ways in which they vary. One, first let's look at size. Generally speaking, hares are larger than rabbits. There are exceptions on either side of the chart, but generally hares are larger, as well as their body structure is very different. Hares tend to have longer hind legs and that is, that is a genetic thing because a rabbit's main instinct when sensing danger is to borrow and go below ground. In domestic situations, you'll see them try to hide in their nest box and get behind containers when they're frightened, right? Because that's their natural instinct to hide. Hares, on the other hand, because of these big powerful hind legs, their main thing when in danger is to run and they do that very well far better than rabbits. Two, another thing to look at is nesting. Now obviously, domestic rabbits that we rear in cages like the ones behind me, we will obviously provide nest boxes for them to build their nest and have their litter. But in the wild, generally, rabbits borrow and make their nest underground. Hares, on the other hand, don't. They live primarily above ground all the time. They would most times build their nests just in a little indentation that they would scratch above ground and use leaves and straw and whatnot to build their nests. Unlike rabbits, which would obviously go below ground. As we're talking about nesting, rabbits would generally have litters ranging from 1 to 12 and sometimes as much as 16, all right? or even more in rare cases. Whereas hares, on the other hand, generally have litter from one to four. Now, in a rabbit, the gestation is roughly 32 days, and it's a little longer for hares, where their gestation ranges roughly around 42 days. So you have an additional 10 days, approximately, longer before they have young. When rabbits do have their young, the young are referred to as kittens or kits for short, as most people know them. With hares, 
they referred to as leverets. Another point to note, and this is a key major difference, when rabbits have kits, they are born totally naked, with no hair and with their eyes closed. Their eyes don't open till around day 10 after Kindle. Hairs on the other hand, baby hairs or leverets, are born with a full coat of fur and their eyes open. As a matter of fact, they can be up and around in as early as an hour or two after birth. Right? All that goes hand in hand with their natural instinct to flight in the face of danger. So that's a key major difference between them. And because hairs, obviously baby hairs are born with fur, they are better able to regulate their body temperature. Unlike kids which are born completely naked, so they need to have that nest with all that fur to keep them warm and they're totally dependent on the dough until they're at least about a month old. So they have very little chance of surviving in the wild whereas hares are naturally adapted to living in the wild so they would obviously have a better survival rate of it. A couple other quick points. Uh, well this is information I gleaned from reading because we don't have much hares here in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, in the US and in Europe they, they're quite popular. But in Trinidad and Tobago, anyone who has a hair would have had to import it more than likely. I don't know that we have any indigenous wild rabbits in Trinidad and Tobago or the Caribbean for that matter. Right? So uh, it said that hairs will change their full color to suit the season. Right? So in winter, they would change their full to white and in spring and times like that so I think it's a gray I'm thinking that that is probably a survival thing right trying to blend in to their surroundings uh, but those of you who rear domestic rabbits we know that their food doesn't change color whatever color they're born that's the color they remain throughout their entire life so we don't have anything like that with rabbits also rabbits in the wild anyway <laughs> They tend to live in groups, uh, building large networks underground referred to as warrens. Right? Again, I've never seen any of that here in Trinidad and Tobago because we don't have wild rabbits. Uh, hares, on the other hand, are said to be more solitary animals. Uh, they live mostly alone and come together occasionally for mating, things like that. So, there are a lot of differences between these two and the main one is still yet to come so don't switch off stay tuned because this is the one that you rabbit farmers are really going to be interested in before we get to that however let's uh, talk a bit about some of the misnomers uh, if you don't know what a misnomer is you can look it up right? check it on google but basically it's something that has a name that tends to be misleading for instance, in the rabbit world, people always refer to certain rabbits that are actually hares and hares that are actually rabbits. Okay, now in the US, I know they have a very common, the jackrabbit. The jackrabbit is actually a hare, it's not a rabbit. But the name jackrabbit tends to mislead you into thinking that it's a rabbit. And there are other breeds like uh, the Belgian here and a couple others that I can't remember right now but I know the name Belgian here leads you to think that it's a hare but it's not it's actually a rabbit. So you need to be mindful of these misnomers. So whenever you discover a breed if you're really interested in it before you go full on into acquiring that breed do a little research check it out make sure it's what you're looking for know that whether it's a rabbit or a hare right in the first place i don't think anyone rears hares in captivity from what i've read i think it's quite difficult because of their kind of skittish nature i think it's difficult to keep them in captivity anyway so 
I don't know. I'm sure someone out there has tried it. All right? If you have, let me know in the comment section if you know anyone who's done it. All right? Drop a comment and let me know how that goes. But finally, we've come to the point that is most important when it comes to rabbit farmers. And this goes straight back to what the other rabbit farmer or future rabbit farmer told me last week. He was thinking about acquiring a hare because of its size to breed with his rabbits to create larger offspring. Now, as a side note, hares, even though they're bigger than rabbits, their meat to bone ratio isn't the same. A rabbit, even though it's smaller, for its size, will have more meat than bone when compared to hares, which generally have longer, larger bones. So they won't be the ideal thing if you're going into meat production anyway. But more importantly, and the point that I've been avoiding for the longest while, and a lot of people don't seem to know this, but hares and rabbits can't reproduce. They cannot be bred to produce offspring. Now I know somebody is going to doubt me and say, oh yes, they know someone who did it, did it, but I am going based on scientific evidence, they cannot be bred. Mating can happen, however, no offspring will be produced, for the simple reason that hares have 24 chromosome pairs. And domestic rabbits only have 22 chromosome pairs. So it's genetically impossible for hares and rabbits to produce offspring. Now I know somebody is going to Google this and look it up because they may doubt it or they may have heard. Because I have heard in the past where people spoke about breeding hares with rabbits and but I believe that it's because in some cases of the misnomer where a rabbit is actually called a hare. So since it's a rabbit and other rabbits can breed with it, whereas if it were a hare, they wouldn't be able to multiply. So that is something that you all could chew on a bit. Look it up, leave a comment and let me know what you think. Okay guys, so this was a quick one, glad to have you guys here with us today anyway, we'll be back next week please God with a brand new rabbit farming video on record keeping, so look forward to that, a number of persons have messaged and emailed asking me about doing a video on record keeping and I'd already planned to do one, but I'm going to bring it forward because that's what the people want, okay, and we aim to please. So look forward next week, please go for a brand new rabbit farming video on record keeping and Wednesday coming, look out for a brand new aquaponics video. So guys, great having you here with us today, Sean Austin, on behalf of my business partner Sean McLean, Sean's Rabbit Tree and Aquaponic Produce, striving to make rabbit farming the number one industry in Trinidad and Tobago. We'll see you guys soon. Peace.